Hello once again coasters, uh, this is Alan again, one of the admins from the page. Um, I asked you earlier on, give us a topic to speak about uh, for, me, for the, my next video. Uh, there's been some interesting feedback uh, from yourselves, thanks very much for the uh, the hints to give us a topic in our so uh, by the way Vic that's a life pit style choice. Yes, I do wear pink for the knitters when I'm stewarding. Thanks very much. Um, I think I'm going to choose what Billy Francis has um, suggested. Is Alan Pardew the right man for the job long term? Well, I go back in time and uh, when he first took over Newcastle, well, Chris Hutton uh, took it up uh, from the championship. Um, done a fantastic job pulling Newcastle out of the, the, the dire straits that, that it was in. Um, got the got the team playing, got the team playing as a unit. Got rid of the dead the dead weight, like the Over Martins and stuff like that. Who were just leeching off the new after the tune, just there for the money and didn't perform one one bit in the Premiership. So anyway, got the back up. Doing well, mid table. Then out the as I mentioned in previous video, why I think Chris Hutton got sacked was about the player committee. But um Alan Pardew comes in. Up row Newcastle. Now a cockney mafia. Um hasn't done out in previous he took West Ham down, I think, didn't he? Went to Charlton, done now to Charlton. Then he went to Southampton. And that's where he, he was starting to get noticed, and that Southampton was in League One at the time. Um, but he, he, he found players, uh, he, he, gave the Oxy, he found Oxy Chamberlain, plays for Arsenal now, great uh, England, plays in England squad now, so he, he found some gems. So, But he came in, I was one of them, oh, here we're gone, back down we're gone, we've got the wrong man for the job. Uh, so he comes in. Then Andy Cowell goes, freaking hell on again. But last season had an excellent season. I have to say it was an excellent season. Uh, got went to Europe. Everyone was singing his praises. Everyone changed their minds about him. But personally, personally speaking, tactics. He's a knee tactician. Um, like I say, I've. There's been times in a game when I've posted on the page that's saying, oh, the formation is wrong. He's playing the wrong formation. He done last season. He was playing four three three, playing ball on the left wing, which isolated him. Um, but somehow I could see where he was coming from because CC and Ball weren't clicking. Uh, I think putting Ball on the left wing isolated him and. Contributed him stop scoring goals. Um, this season, he's been trying to play two up front when Ball was here. Opposite way around, CC wasn't scoring, but Ball was. Ball left it as well for Chelsea for seven and a half million. The clause was activated, and so he's playing a. Uh, Four two three one formation, which I do despise personally. Uh, I think it's a pile of shade. Um, like I say, CC is not one man band up front. He's not getting the service that he should be getting. I think. Uh, I think, give Gufran a, a, a try up front. He's, he won't do that. He plays him on the right with Ben Arfa being out. I don't know what he's going to do when Ben Arfa starts a game. With Gufran, I hope he hopefully may refer to two up front, especially for the West Brom game coming up. Um, our next game, so he gets an eight, eight year contract. I see where Mike Ashley's coming from, stability in the club. You've seen it at Manchester United with uh, the the drunken Scotsman. You see it at uh, Arsenal with the French winger. Um. You've seen it at Everton. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, Everton. Um, um, 
with Dave, uh, Dave Moyes, uh, he's done a cracking job at Everton on no money. There's no money in Everton, but he's doing a good job at Everton. I have to say. Um, so yes, I see where my Ash is coming from. Give him a but eight year contract. Uh, on you know, I think it was a bit. You know, since he got that contract, everything went downhill. You know, we started the season beating Tottenham and all oh, everything's on a high. Went to the Matums, nearly beat them. Unfortunately, Denver Bar scored an own goal, which made them the top score for them that month. By the way, but um, Mike Ashley put his head on and right was you see all these other clubs, they're stable, they're quite successful, especially like Manchester United. We'll install them long term. I've got concerns about that because, like I say, tactically he's not the right man. If you can bring someone in with a tactical mind in the backroom staff, I think it might work because he is passionate. I think he's a good motivator when it has to be. You've seen in, um, over the season when Newcastle's been absolutely shite the first half. They've came with fight in the second half, so you must have, you must do something half time to get them all fired up. Um, I have criticised some of his changes, like the substitutions. I remember once when they brought Marvel off and put on um, who was it? A defensive. It was more defensive, like Anita, I think it was, or more defensive midfielder. I think. With like one goal lead and sometimes we've lost it because he's been too defensive, you know. So I think what I would personally do is I if you can one nil up, but then get defensive, kill the game off, try to kill the game. Maybe he's having a bit of a Keegan um mentality about it, you know what I mean? Not not as much as what Kevin Keegan used to say was, them score three, we score four. We're still gonna think defensively, but Devin gone too negative too early in the game. I think that's been a problem this season. We've took a lead and then comes out second half, 60, 60 odd minutes, he goes negative and I, I totally disagree with that. Um, but like, sometimes they've came out negative and he's trying to go down to other big clubs and go defensive and he, he didn't do that. I think best when you get into the big clubs like Old Trafford and you go to the Eddie Hard. You need a gun and rattle them. Rattle the club. They won't expect it. And I think we've done that at Old Trafford and Boxing Day. We came out, scored and rattled them. But we were very unfortunate. Yet again, officials were freaking arseholes for man new. But you need a gun and big clubs and rattle them. But I think he goes out a bit negative. That's that's one thing. Signings wise, he's done well. Um Bringing in the likes of Johan Kabai, um, Suzuku, Debushi, uh, he bought Denver Ball. With the help of Graham Core, by the way, yes, you can now do the scouting network, great. I don't know who, I'd, someone shed the light on it. Was it Mike Ashley who got him, or was it actually uh, Paul Joe who pointed out Graham Core? But he's got a good scouting network. He makes the decision. He gets it and gets then leaves all the money inside, as he says, to the board. You know, all the negotiating. But uh, I think a team wise, yes. The negative is yes. They all go about France, France, France. One of the things I thought in the derby when we got absolutely annihilated. You need a the passion there, so you need some local lads there to be passionate about the game. Yes, you've got Stevie Taylor, but like in the past you've had Peter Beardsley who's been passionate about the game, and she was passionate about it, so I'm mean, always passionate about it. But I don't think the French lads and the other foreigner are too... They don't know what really, really means. I know that there's no free story, right? And I, and I think they'd have tried to treat it as any other game. Sullen came, dominated... The game, they didn't dominate, but they came out as underdogs. Because I don't know where, where I work and Gan Rund with uh, Tottenham fellow Newcastle fans, 
but the, the confidence was high. Oh, we'll turn them our neighbour. That I think so. And came in there, undercut underdogs, got um motivated, and caught were caught were cold. It'd be different next season. Cause if 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 them do stay up, right? I think I hope we get them nice and early next season. Cause I think it'll be a different story. I think we'll we'll we're like a scorned animal. I think we'll get and turn them out. Tell you the truth, that's if Pods gans in and um, doesn't go negatively. Right? So anyway, um, yes, it's hard to say long term. It's hard to say. You, you never know what's in the corner. You might lose the plot. You might, you know, uh, if he uh, if he doesn't have Graham Carr there, spotting uh, this talent. No, but as long as he's got Graham Carr there to spot the talent, as long as he's he motivates the players as he has been, and he doesn't and changes his tactics a bit, use a bit of being, get someone in to help him, but you know, the assistant who can. Think about tactics, you know, good a good tactician. That's all we need, and get the best formation got for the team, you know. Uh, I don't think we're playing the right formation, and I think he needs to start listening to certain degree the fans. He always goes on about the fans. Hey, I can't fault him for that. He always thanks the fans, or like after a derby defeat, he came out and apologised to the fans. I think that takes a big man to do that, and Adam Pardew does that really well with the fans. He's got a good rapport with the fans. Hey, I've got no against the kid, but when you're looking at long term, you've got to think about the club, you know. So if the support network is there, I think he's still the right man for the job long term. But if any of them cogs fall off, I think it could be a bit of a slide, and. You've got to think who else is out there who could replace him. If he did go, you know, who else is on there on the market, you know. We we're not going to pick up the, the Mourinho's and out like that, you know. Because I think they rely on big budgets, you know. But you, you, middle of park managers, I don't think as many as good good as Alan Pardew, maybe, you know what I mean. Um, I've, you've had that... Um, when you look at like uh, Atkins, who used to be at Southampton, good good manager, but I think Pardew is better than him, more experience. You've got um, McDermott, who used to be at uh, Redden, and he's way to Leeds now. Uh, I think yeah, good up up and coming manager, but now he's good at Adam Pardew. So in the present moment, yes, he's a right man for the job. Um, but, like I say, he's got that support network there as well, which has helped him along fine. And I think if we've got the support network there, the team we've got, the staff we've got, I think we'll be we'll be okay. So, as long as that's there, I think he's the man for a job. But when the wheels start falling off and he's losing, maybe he's losing any of his backroom staff or, or especially the scouting network, what he's got. I think it could be a struggle for him. But um for that I think um I think I've hopefully I've answered the question. To sum it up, long term, as long as he's got the support network, I think he'll be fine. Uh hopefully he'll make some good signings in the summer. I think I'm gonna make another video very soon about um who we should bring in, in the summer, who should leave in the summer. Uh and I see if there's any suggestions on this page, uh, who we should bring in and who who should leave, who's the dead waiting to get rid of. Uh, so I'll leave it for there for now. Uh, thanks for uh, watching the video, and uh, just make sure you like the page all aboard the uh, Toon Roller Coaster, and we're also on Twitter as well at Pods Boys. Okay, see you later. Ciao now.